I have in front of me here a portable monitor. It was sent to me by a company called Ophia, O-F-I-Y-A-A. -A. Um, depending on where you buy this from, they may actually have their partner name, uh, which is uh, Cop Gain. They actually reached out to me under the term, under the name Cop Gain, C-O-P-G-A-I-N. So it is a portable monitor. Um, but it's going to be more of a permanent portable monitor. So you can definitely put it in a bag and take it with you. It's more something that you can have set up and, you know, have as a pretty sturdy portable monitor. So you can see here uh, it stands up horizontal. You can put it in vertical. Uh, you can have it kind of like laying down like that. Um, the specs on this are pretty respectable from what I can tell. It's a 1080p monitor, IPS screens. Uh, you're going to have a 60 hertz refresh rate. But it's a 300 nit screen. Apparently it has 72% uh, NTSC for uh, color which is actually pretty good, to be honest. So that'll be very good overall. Um, so there should be good colors on this. Nice crisp white box, rivet comes out. Uh, so we have our nice presentation here so far. I'll deal with that after. So we'll set that back there. That's the screen itself. Let's see what goodies we get inside. We get a USB-C, a C. That'll be, you know, you can plug it into your wall because this will support power delivery. Uh, so I can plug this into my wall, for example. And then you get a second one here. You can plug into your device. You get your cord here. So you get a HDMI with USB-C and two USB-A. So that's cool. I'm gonna, I guess I am gonna have to read that here, like a full thick color manual. That's actually kind of nice. Yeah, it's not like a cheapo kind of so you can just plug USB-C into USB-C and you're good to go. That's typically how it works because it'll send, you know, not just power, data, it'll send video signals, you know, other data. So if you're using, for example, the on-screen uh, keys there, you, you can't do that over HDMI. It's not possible. So USB-C will support that. So you can just, you know, use that straight up. No shenanigans needed. But if you have a USB, if you have a more of an older device, I guess, that doesn't have USB-C uh, display, you can use the HDMI. So you plug in your HDMI and, you know, you get your video signal this goes into the monitor. But then the other issue is, uh, you know, you're gonna be lacking potentially some of those like on-screen extras, some of those goodies that you'd get out of this. So then you're gonna to wanna to plug these into. Um, so we have that there. Looks like it already has the uh, stand attached in one orientation. Um, so we get our film here. We'll take that off in a second. I'm gonna leave it on for now. Um, but let's explore the ports here. So we have USB-C power delivery. It'll actually supply power to your laptop. Then you get two more USB-C, uh, it says 2.0, so 400 megabytes a second. So we, that'll support you know, NVMe drives. Obviously it'll support peripherals like keyboards and that kind of stuff. Uh, your screen, so this is gonna I guess go to your computer itself, into your computer, power goes in here. Uh, that's what it appears to be. And this goes to your screen, I guess. Uh, maybe speakers, we'll have to see if that says speakers on the bottom. Is that another USB-C on the bottom? I don't think so. I, don't, I just think that's a little plug there. These are some nice feet here. Uh, so I guess you can stand it, you know, in this mode right here um, and, you know, have it as a keyboard. Because remember, you can use this as a keyboard. So you can have it as a touch keyboard if need be. Um, that's kind of cool. And it gives you a little slant on it. Um, you can go lower. So that's, you know, maximum height for the what I'd call the keyboard. You can also go like that, a little bit lower. And then this is the stand. Yeah, that's cool. So you can obviously switch it, so you can have it in horizontal mode, like this, right? Like a standard monitor, but you can also put it in portrait mode, you know, if you're editing, uh, you know, documents and that kind of thing, put it in portrait mode. So yeah, nice little rotating base and everything. Rubber feet on the bottom, that's the rotating base there. Uh, you know, soft feet, it's like a rubber, but it's a soft touch rubber. Um, so it shouldn't become all gross. Cool. So you can basically, I gotta move my camera. So you can basically have a setup like this. You can bring it down, you know, angle it as needed, however you wanna you know, look at it like that. But you can also bring it down like this and tilt it back. So if you wanna have it, you know, nice and low, basically right there and right in front of you like that, totally fine, uh, but you can raise it up. So the actual ergonomics of the device are quite good actually. Um, it's better than like a lot of very high-end monitors, like actual you know, computer monitors. This is a huge monitor. I mean, it's 15 by 15.6 inch, so obviously it's a big monitor. Uh, um, the top one is computer, I believe. Okay, so it's working. Yeah, there you go. So uh, top is uh, video, 
data uh, power in to your monitor. So you can see here, uh, let's see if I unplug this, this is my power to my surface. It's maintaining power. So you can see there, see I'm charging the device from uh, power delivery. So, I mean, you could power the other way around. So, you know, I can go like this and unplug this, watch this. Okay, so right now my laptop is sending a signal over here and powering this. So this is accepting power from my laptop. My laptop is getting power from the battery or you know you can use your proprietary laptop charger. The battery will go into the monitor. So I'm charging the monitor now from my laptop, but you can also you know go this route, unplug that. Same thing, I'm charging the monitor from my laptop or you can plug in the monitor itself and now it goes the other way around. My monitor now supplies power to my laptop. Uh, I like glossy screens because the colors really pop. So you can see right there off the bat, the blues are quite similar on the two of them. So you can use this as a touch screen, um, which is gonna be, I find that you know if you have an external monitor to a laptop, it is actually quite nice. There's all the advantages of having a touch screen on the portable monitor. So let's say I'm working over here on you know, a document and I'm typing, um, and you know, I'd have to bring my trackpad over here and start doing something on this, you know, over here, over here, depending on what I want to do. That can be super annoying, right? To get back. Okay. Now I got to go back over here. I got to go back over here. And if, what if it's way over here on this screen and I have to work my way across all these screens, but maybe, you know, I'm just working on this over here and I can just use this as a touch screen, right? Like how much easier is that? Oh, I just want to quickly read this web page here. All right. There's this cop game monitors. Cool, I like their stuff. And then, you know, I'm back over here, right? I don't have to bring my mouse over here and disrupt the workflow on the primary screen over here. Like I can just, you know, navigate via this here, right? Like that's super cool to me. Um, and I don't have to bring my mouse over. And then when I wanna get, you know, get some work done, I'm over here. So touch screen is actually very useful for a portable monitor. Press the button on the screen there and this keyboard came up on the screen. And then this looks kind of weird. So I think what you need to do here is after you press that, if you wanna use the on screen keyboard, uh, then you're going to need to come in here and like make it extend again because it will go back to being duplicate. So you just press the button and then you're like, oh, why does that look weird like that? And then you just extend it again. And it just, yeah, it just fixes itself, right? So, um, yeah. So now I have that over there and it's back to being a normal screen. You may want to go, you know, something like that there. If you put it into its uh, like typing, typing mode or whatever. So, you know, you can use it like that. Yeah, it's actually really good. You can also, you know, now it's kind of slanted, but you can put these feet up in the back here and put it in like legit keyboard mode. So now, you know, it's like right in front of me as a keyboard. I can have this over here, or I could have a tablet up in front of me here. So let's say, imagine I had a tablet here, right? And I'm typing on my tablet, and uh, you know, you can use this with your tablet instead. Oh, okay, well that was really easy. Okay, so we have a menu here. That was significantly easier than I anticipated. Um, so let's look at this now. So we have our brightness here. Uh, we'll turn it up max, obviously. Volume uh, for speakers, which we'll test after. Well, I'm not sure how loud it'll be, so let's put it at 50 to start. Actually, you know what? Let's turn the speakers up to max, and I'll use my uh, laptop audio to turn it down so I don't blow the speakers. Uh, warm, which makes it warm. Standard, cool. Uh, that obviously works, but we'll leave it like that. Uh, rotation settings, I'm not going to do that now because um, I'm not trying to rotate my screen yet. So that's good. Let's start with that. So if you have headphones, you may want to watch them. This is 60%. Very comfortable. I'm going to turn it up. That's 90. That's kind of loud. Okay, put 100%. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Kind of sounds like any laptops, any generic laptop speakers. Um, you know, it's not it's not gonna be like a MacBook kind of speakers. It sounds fine, I guess. Video games start with easy tutorial level. Whoa, self-awareness. This is a video game. They weren't wrong. This game does start with an easy tutorial level. Every now and again, Bart pops up 
pops up on the screen and tells you. Yep, so it sounds fine. Uh, 1 to 1,000 contrast ratio. Um, yeah, it looks good. I'm not seeing any I'm not seeing any IPS bloom around the edge of the screen there. Uh, zoom out a little bit here. No IPS bloom, you can see there. Like none at all. So there's none of that IPS bloom nonsense that you get. Um, I think touchscreens are less prone to that, maybe. But uh, it's got good contrast ratio. It's not like an OLED, but it looks nice. My recording device is freaking out, but you can see that the contrast is nice. Nice bold red on that part there, um, looking good. The blues look nice and bright. Um, you know, they pop quite nice. Very, very bold blues. Um, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, very nice greens. Yeah, so they, you know, they claim this is a 72% uh, NTSC, and I believe it. I mean, it looks quite nice, actually. Uh, you can see how much vivid, more vivid the colors are. Like that green, I hope that my camera can actually show that. It's always tough to show this kind of stuff on camera, but you know, that's like a, I don't know, washed out kind of green. That's a nice bold lime green there. Uh, it looks quite nice actually. Yeah, so you can see that there if I bring that in. Look at the difference in those blues. It's much more pronounced in person too. The iPhone is trying to uh, normalize the two images, but I can tell you right off the bat that this looks better. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, very, very good colors. Yeah, so this is a, this is a really nice screen. Um, like I can tell you right off the bat. I mean, objectively it's nice, 72% NTSC. I don't have the ability to test these things. Like I, you know, I'm not that level, but I can tell you from someone who works with colors, obviously on YouTube, but specifically in like cartography, I work with that kind of stuff. I can recognize bad colors right off the bat. And this looks good. Um, I think a lot of people will use it in portrait mode, actually. I mean, the, the second monitor horizontally is nice because you get so much screen real estate, but I think that portrait mode is going to be very compelling for a lot of people, um, obviously because, you know, you get your monitor here. Uh, having, you know, a horizontal setup is nice too, but I mean, having, you know, this in portrait mode is actually pretty compelling for me um, because, you know, you can be working on like a large document or something like that over here. Okay, so there you go, portrait flipped, and there's my monitor. Um, I mean, there's lots of ways you could use this. So, uh, yeah, I'll bring that down there. There we go. And you can see there we have our setup. Um, I mean, you could watch YouTube. You could have two panels over here, I guess. You, can, you could have, you know, you could have like YouTube at the top there and then, I don't know, whatever on the bottom over here. Um, you know, you can decide how you want to set this thing up. You have your full length website over here and then, you know, you're working on a document or something over here. So, you know, I'm over here. I am working on a document and then, you know, I come through here. Okay. I can check this website here. You know, these guys have some cool stuff. Okay. This one here is a uh, touchscreen one. That's actually the monitor right there. Um, touch. It's a, uh, it looks like they have an HP with this one. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, this is literally the, mon oh, cool. They have it hooked up with a switch. So, I mean, that's literally what we're going with here, right? So you, you're taking this, um, you're really improving your workflow by having something like this over here. I mean, you can put an Excel spreadsheet over here and have rows and rows of Excel over here. That's pretty sweet. I mean, it's obviously, I mean, it's full monitor HDMI, so you can hook up any gaming console to it that you want, um, use it in horizontal mode or whatever. Um, very compelling. So I'm, you know, this is probably how I'm going to be using it. I could have it, you know, horizontally and have it on the side, but I'm probably actually going to have this as a permanent monitor, as weird as that sounds. Um, you know, it goes over HDMI, so I'm probably going to put it in this corner right here. So now let's test one of the reasons that I would find this thing super compelling, and that's with, you know, an ROG Ally or a Steam Deck. I have both. Uh, we'll try with the ROG Ally to start. Plug that in. This is going to supply power. You know, you don't need to uh, plug this in. So this, you know, the ROG Ally will now supply power to this monitor here. Um, you can see there. So now I have this gigantic ROG Ally screen, um, which is, you know, the ROG Ally is like this big. I have like four times the screen size now, so I can just get this thing out of here if need be. Um, so now I have my ROG Ally. Use the device, because the ROG Ally is a touchscreen device, and if you don't have this hooked up via touchscreen, I mean, you no longer can navigate your ROG Ally. But I don't have that issue anymore because this is a touchscreen. Just like my uh, ROG Ally, you can see I can navigate here. So um, if you were doing this with a non-touchscreen portable monitor, like I have my Lenovo M14 that I keep mentioning, I can't do this. Typically what happens is the ROG Ally screen turns off. 
so I can't navigate anymore, right? If I had a non-touchscreen monitor, I can no longer navigate this interface. I have no ability to, to navigate, right? I have to have a mouse and keyboard, but this is a touchscreen, right? So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Bluetooth, mouse, and keyboard, um, hook them up here, and you know, play an RTS-style game, put the ROG ally off to the side, you know, put him over here for now, and then I can just have my screen in front of me, you know, play, like in my case, it would be, you know, I have some RTS games that would work better on a mouse and keyboard than would work on the gamepad. So, and of course you don't lose touchscreen, right? So you can go in this like big keyboard mode and it actually minimizes the screen a little bit here. So it becomes smaller. And then, you know, you can use this normally like you would an ROG Ally. So you're not losing any functionality here, right? So let's go Bluetooth and other devices. I'm going to hook up this here. So we'll go Bluetooth. I'll add my, uh, so now I have my Xbox controller paired. You know, I can navigate with the screen here. This is the same, this is about the same size as an ROG Ally screen, maybe a little bit bigger actually. Um, you know, I can do it like this if I, if I need the keyboard, for example. You know, I don't need to bring a keyboard with me this way. Play like this and then I say, okay, okay, I'm done for now. Um, you know, I'm just ready to do some Windows stuff now. Uh, play some games, so click that there. Kick back out. And there we go. Now we're back into full screen mode. Uh, or whatever you want to call it. So now let's play some games, right? So if you're you're a competitive Call of Duty player or something like that, and you're like dependent on 400 hertz refresh rate, okay, sure, maybe it's not for you, but I mean, for me, this is totally fine. It's a very nice looking screen too, right? Like this very, very nice looking screen. But this is the type of thing you're gonna to wanna to set down, um, you know, get it set up and really, you know, use it. It that looks great. I wouldn't wanna put it away and, you know, just have it only for, you know, auxiliary use like I use my other portable monitors for where it's just like, I don't know, maybe I need a second screen. This is something that I actually wanna set up and just use all the time. It's very compelling with something like an ROG Ally. Okay, so I've tested it with the ROG Ally. Let's test it with the Steam Deck. I mean, it's gonna work. It's the same thing basically. But, uh, you know, let's test it with the Steam Deck just for posterity. So okay, and there you go. Uh, as with the ROG Ally, the Steam Deck screen turns off. I would assume that when these guys made this screen here, they realized, you know, how popular the Steam Deck is. A very, very popular handheld, obviously. And so the fact that you can navigate um, your Steam Deck easily, right? Like, it's not hard for me to come through here and look at all my Steam games. A lot of Steam games. Um, you know, I can see my 100, 404 games here and I easily navigate through the Steam Deck. You know, set that guy up there, keep him all nice and cool over there. His sound is over there. Speakers here to produce sound. And, you know, I'm ready to play games over here. So you can see here I plugged in this NVMe enclosure. I plugged it in here. You can use USBs, that kind of thing. So it's nice as well that, you know, if you're using this, you got, you'd actually expand your ports. So if you're using, you know, like a MacBook Air, MacBook Air has, iOS have so few ports, or of course, you know, if you're using your Steam Deck or your ROG Ally, you have one port on those. So when you plug in this monitor here, I mean, you can actually expand it by adding things like NVMe enclosures. So you get something like an USB-C dock at the same time as you get all the other features. So, you know, it's a monitor, but you also can use it as a USB-C dock type situation. So very, very cool uh, that you can have that feature as well.